Okay, in this lesson, let's go ahead and start grouping this stuff together. We're starting to get quite a few assets. Let's get a few of these assets together and kind of place them in areas that make sense. Let's right click in the sprites folder and say add group. Say player. We're going to, I clicked on this one, held shift and clicked on the bottom one. These three are going to move inside the player. Now you'll see it'll kind of glow on the right if it's going in. It'll glow on the bottom if it's going below. And it'll glow on top if it's going above. So now we have a folder called player. Do another group called power ups. And let's do another group called enemies. There we go. Nice and organized. Now let's do the same thing over here. Add group player. And if you want to pick and choose ones, you can hold control and it will select only the ones that you click on. Add group. Power ups. Group enemies. Add this bad boy, evil mastermind. Tuck him away in there. Let's add a group in sprites called backgrounds. We're just going to do some really simple ones for now. Almost embarrassingly so. This is going to be 64 by 64. Edit image. And we're just going to take this one and just do a few stars. Nothing fancy. Just a couple of them. That one say S stars close. We can do one more. Right. Also be 64 by 64. Edit image. We want to stay on the one pixel one. Let's make it look exactly like the one you I seem to go in the spots every Not like that. S stars bar. Okay. We're going to go to our background here. We're going to create another background. This is going to be backgrounds, stars close. And we're going to scale it horizontal tile and vertical tile. This one is going to be background, stars far. Horizontal and vertical. And horizontal speed is going to be 0.25. The other one, the horizontal speed is going to be, I'm sorry, it needs to be negative. I'm going to say negative 2. Negative 0.5. Now, we've got some animation that's going to happen because we've got a horizontal speed. It's a negative 0.5. So, if we hit this play button, it'll show us what that looks like. And that gives it some real depth. Isn't that neat? If we wanted to show you, I think I said, make sure you clear the viewport background. I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. Whoa, <laughs> that is just bizarre. Yeah, that's why you always clear the viewport background. Because it is letting every image stay there forever and it's never attempting to clean up. So every frame of animation that shows up is written in there. Let's try it again, huh? Okay, yeah, look at that. That looks great. And it gives us like kind of a parallax, uh, feeling of parallax and uh, layers because the background is moving slowly and the foreground is moving quickly. Also, just as a personal note, it makes you feel like you're moving super fast when you're moving against the background, kind of slow when you're scooting back. Now we have to be moving at the exact speed as it starts. We might need to change that. 
Let's change that to 1.75. Now you might be wondering, how does it move back by 1.75 pixels per step? And it's not actually. If you tell something to move at 0.5 pixels per step, it's actually just moving one pixel every other step. But it's smooth enough because we're running at 60 frames per second to where it's really kind of imperceptible. So you don't have a problem with it kind of stuttering along. If this game was running at 12 or 24 or 30 frames per second, you'd probably notice it and it looks kind of ugly. But at 60 frames per second, it really runs pretty smoothly. One of the things we want to go for, if you're looking for fidelity, if you're trying to imitate an old Nintendo game perfectly, then you're going to have to emulate a lot of the hardware limitations, which is actually harder to do than to not do. Game Maker is so much more advanced than the original NES technology, the hardware and the software. That, And I love the Nintendo, don't get me wrong. I actually have a pretty good Nintendo collection. Absolutely love it. This game was inspired by Life Force, which I grew up playing. I absolutely loved it. But the limitations were there, and we don't have those anymore. So what you want to try to do is instead of emulate the restrictions, you want to emulate the nostalgia and the spirit of the game. I mean, for instance, I mean, I think the Nintendo could only handle, I believe, six sprites in a row or a column, which is why you got a lot of flickering on old video games. You would get slow down and flickering because when it was trying to handle, say, eight or nine objects in the same line, it would actually take turns showing you what was on screen at one time because it couldn't show all of it on screen at once. So like a bullet spread like this isn't even possible. Go back and play the original Contra. Uh, when you get the spread gun in the original Contra, which is one of my favorite games of all time, the bullets disappear and reappear, uh, and it doesn't look like you're shooting bullets half the time, but you can still get data and feedback when you kill enemies with bullets that you can't even see because it has to prioritize okay, we've got too many things running on screen at once. Do we want to encounter slowdown or do we want to restrict what's visible? And restricting what's visible is preferable to slowdown. And so it has to make sacrifices. Uh, Super Dodgeball does not run well on the original Nintendo. It's an awesome game. I absolutely love it. But it has tons of sprite flickering because it was a very ambitious game. But anyway, there you go. I think that's it for now. Have a good one. We'll see you next lesson.